I'm looking at how many toys are in my cat's toy basket right now, and you know, I'm thinking they might be a little spoiled. Hello, and welcome to, or back to, my channel. I'm Kit, and today, Brad Cooper is being dishonest. Again. Before we get into it, I would like to note that I don't know Brett, and these are my thoughts and opinions on the content she puts out for public consumption. That being said, thank you for clicking on this video, and I would like to give extra thanks to my patrons. Links to my socials and Patreon are below, along with sources and resources, and now, on to the reason we're all here. Brett Cooper is a Daily Wire commentator, and in April I posted Brett Cooper and Conservative Dishonesty. Last time, Brett clickbaited us into believing that Gen Z is sleeping around more than ever, yet concluded that Gen Z is actually having less sex. Did her commenters realize the bait and switch? No. And here we are again, Brett posted the fastest way to become miserable, which wouldn't usually catch my attention, but the thumbnail read poly relationships, and so here we are. The point of Brett's video, such as it is, is to convince us that polyamorous relationships are bad and tradition is good. And I have to wonder, does she really think her audience is considering polyamory? Anyway, let's take a journey with Brett to see how she reaches her conclusion. Brett opens her video by declaring that tradition is good, actually, and one of the reasons things are weird now is because we're not traditional. Her examples of tradition are homeschooling. Raising and educating children outside of the school system was once the norm. That is what everybody did. The Department of Education and government public schools are actually very new in the grand scheme of our history, and I would argue that they have just made a stummer and they have wasted millions upon millions, maybe billions of taxpayer dollars. And even though the Department of Education was only started in 1979, public schools and feeding into that system is now the norm. And if you pull your children out of that system and you educate them at home or online or in a co-op situation, you are seen as weird. And people will say that you are ruining your children both academically and socially. I'm sure you guys have heard all the critiques. As a homeschooler myself, I have heard them time and time again, but that change happened fast. I'm a bit curious as to what Brett thinks homeschooling looked like before public schools were created. I'm also curious as to when she thinks public education became the norm because I wouldn't call the 1800s very new. And though the Department of Education was created in 1979, the Office of Education was created in 1867. Anyway, her next example is having kids. Another example is just having children. It was once just what you did. And now not only is it less common, but in many areas and industries and communities, women are mocked for wanting children. I would know because that happened to me time and time again when working in Hollywood. And even when I've been outside of working in Hollywood, I still get those concerns from people. Some people will always have something to say. I've gotten comments about not having or wanting kids. And wanting and having kids is still considered something very normal in general. Someone being surprised or concerned a teenager wanted kids isn't evidence of a societal trend. Anyway, Brett's two examples are meant to illustrate how progressives are so concerned with subverting tradition. But basically the point is, progressives are so concerned with subverting tradition in every aspect of our lives. And I'm not concerned by this just because I want normalcy and convention and I want everybody to do what I wanna do, but I'm concerned by it because what is traditional is often traditional for a reason. Because through different time periods and different communities and through different families and people, it has still worked and been proven effective time and time again. And much of what people are pushing today is the exact opposite of that, like polyamorous relationships, which is what we have to talk about today. I like how conservatives say things were better in the past, but they never clarify how. We're just supposed to take it on faith that things were better. I also like how every time someone lives outside the norm, conservatives raise the alarm that that is something being pushed on others. It's as though conservatives know that the better past actually isn't better, so they have to keep the existence of other ways of living a secret. Anyway, Brett says people are desperate to make polyamory happen, and no. No one cares if other people are polyamorous or not, they just don't want to be shamed or ostracized for their relationships. Brett does say this sort of content thrives online, so I suppose this is why we're getting our, what, quarterly shaming of people who aren't living life as they're supposed to. She also says people are watching because this content is so strange, but if it was really that weird, why the alarm? Why the need to shame people in polyamorous relationships and try to claim that they're all secretly miserable? Anyway, Brett is upset that people write positive articles about polyamory, and she claims these articles have worked. 
because polyamory is becoming more and more normalized by the day. And just so we're on the same page here, not everything should be normalized. We should not tell the world everything. We should not be desensitized to everything. Let's bring back some taboos is basically what I'm saying. Sure, not everything should be normalized, but what's so wrong with polyamory that it needs to be kept in the dark like some sort of dirty secret? I suppose we'll get there eventually, but first, Brett needs to show us how normalized polyamory has become. Over the last 20 or so years, it has become seen as more and more morally acceptable. The biggest jump being 5% to 20% between the years of 2006 and 2020. And info from dating apps shows that it's not only becoming more morally acceptable, but that more and more people are putting it into practice. Axios reported that 33% of OkCupid users said that they would consider an open relationship, up from 27% in 2014. And there was a 45% increase in profile file mentions of terms relating to non-monogamy between 2021 and 2023. And in February of 2023, a YouGov poll found that the number of Americans interested in monogamy had fallen from 61% to 55%. And what caused that shift? Ah, yes, polyamory. But to get into more detail, the poll found that one third of Americans, or 34%, described their ideal relationship as something other than complete monogamy. To measure this, YouGov asked people to rate their ideal relationship on a scale of zero to six, where zero represented complete monogamy and six meant complete non-monogamy. Many adults who do not choose total monogamy desire something in between complete monogamy and complete non-monogamy, with 26% of all Americans choosing an option in the middle, a number between one and five. So my assumption is that people are being wishy washy and they don't know what they want and being completely non-monogamous doesn't sound good obviously because that completely goes against our nature but it's cool so you're picking something that's sort of in the middle so you can touch into both buckets that is social contagion at work my friends this is simultaneously weird and sad it's sad because brett is clearly grasping to show the spread of polyamory and it's weird because she shows no such thing Polyamory is, according to some polls, slightly more accepted than it used to be. More people are potentially open to non-monogamous relationships. That's great, but it doesn't mean that polyamory is replacing or even on par with monogamy. And it's even weirder that Brett puts this down to social contagion. It's like Brett can't imagine people being rational creatures who don't just do whatever they see online that looks cool. And to be honest, polyamory is work. I suspect Brett and friends think polyamory is just having sex with whoever, whenever, but it is so much more than that. And so everyone knows when I say that's great, it's not because I want people to be polyamorous. It's because it's great that people are actually thinking about what they want out of life. There's nothing wrong with the norm if that's what you truly want, but a lot of people don't actually think about it, which is what people like Brett and Abby are here to discourage. They don't want you to think about any of it. Conform to gendered expectations, marry someone of the opposite sex, and have kids. That is what they want, and that is why they treat the whisper of anything different as a social contagion that must be eradicated, or at least shamed back into secrecy. No one must ever know that there are multiple ways to live and that no way is the one right way for everyone. And I would say that the interest in other ways of living is a good indicator that no, tradition actually isn't better, otherwise there would be very little interest in anything different. But anyway, sure, polyamory is more common than it used to be. What's next? And it is working hard because everywhere that you look, the media is telling you that polyamory is the best and it just makes you so, so happy and you will be so fulfilled. I mean, like just last week, Forbes published this piece, Why Are Non-Monogamous Relationships? relationships thriving? A psychologist answers. I mean, that was on June 8th of this year. And they talked about happiness levels and sexual satisfaction and what people are getting out of these relationships. And they wrote, individuals in non-monogamous relationships experience greater satisfaction and commitment than their monogamous counterparts. Non-traditional relationships result in greater satisfaction, boasting better communication, more openness, and need fulfillment than conventional relationships. And that first line alone is just laughable and so ironic. Just listen again. Individuals in non-monogamous relationships experience greater commitment than their monogamous no, you don't. You literally don't. You can argue that you're happier until the cows come home, but you do not experience greater commitment. That completely goes against what non-monogamy is. Non-monogamy and polyamory aren't the same thing, but regardless, yes, you can be polyamorous and be committed to your partners. Yes, plural. For some people, commitment goes beyond, I promise to have sex with you and only you for the rest of our lives. Why am I losing my voice? Anyway, she gave us a positive article as an example of how polyamory is trying to happen, which she promptly refuted by saying that the claims made were untrue because they just are. Or Brett wouldn't be happier in a non-monogamous relationship, therefore no one can be. I really don't know. Anyway. Then they got into the stats and they said a 2015 study published in Sexual and Relationship Therapy found that adults age 55 and above were happier in non-exclusive, unconventional relationships compared to those in monogamous relationships. But guys, the thing is, 
These were the only stats that they actually had in this entire article. Everything else consisted of these broad sweeping statements about how the swingers were more sexually satisfied and everyone was very happy. That's the point in all of these articles. We're so freaking happy. Also, side note, they touched on who is more likely to be poly and wow, wouldn't you know, my friends, there are value-based differences in who is monogamous and who is poly. Individuals who perceive an abundance in romantic alternatives and hold liberal, political, and religious views are more open to breaking traditional relationship norms. Wow, not surprised whatsoever. I mean, didn't we just do a whole episode about how these people are so happy and just so fulfilled and so healthy? Not, but TLDR, those people are not happy or healthy. I'll link the article Brett is referring to below, and I just want to note that swinging, non-monogamy, and polyamory are not interchangeable. I also want to point out, and this will be important later, that Brett is disappointed with the lack of stats, and she doesn't believe the article anyway. And that is it for the why are people choosing polyamory. Now we're going to get into the misery. I'm sure you guys saw Rocky and Tater in the B-roll of that ad. They are happy, they are healthy, unlike people in poly relationships. Anyway, no matter what they tell you, I truly do not believe that polyamory equals happiness and satisfaction and the data is backing me up here. I mean, one of the greatest things about monogamy and marriage is the security and the commitment, which is essential to human beings feeling safe and happy. And that is often non-existent in polyamory and shocker might just contribute to the skyrocketing rates of depression and anxiety that people in these relationship setups experience. Someone needs to tell Brett that just because you insist someone can't possibly be healthy or happy, that doesn't make it so. You might think now would be the time Brett turns to those studies she promised to show us earlier about how polyamory is actually bad for you, but is it a Brett Cooper video if we don't get some Twitter posts? But before we get into the numbers, I thought that this video representation might be useful. Pagliassi the Hated posted this on X and she said, I have yet to see a video from a polyamorous person talking about how their relationship works without them obviously coping or being on the verge of actual tears the entire time. Just watch this one. My husband and I have been non-monogamous for 13 years at this point. During our first pregnancy, neither of us was dating because we were just so overwhelmed and excited to be parents. During our second pregnancy, my husband did date. Because we've been non-monogamous for so long, we're really good at discussing our boundaries as our needs change. I was able to say to him during that time, I would be more comfortable if you were dating people that didn't live in our city. I didn't really want to date anyone at the time, partially because of my job and partially because of kind of a growing belly, but I was fine with him dating. If anything, it kind of removed some pressure for me because I was overwhelmed at work. Despite the fact that I was tired and not getting enough sleep and not feeling like I was spending enough time with my son, I was convinced that I should be able to do it all and wear, you know, super tight dresses and heels while growing a baby inside me. So she was doing all of this while her husband was leaving town to date. She was doing it all and managing everything at work and telling her husband to leave town to date. That is not functional no matter which way you slice it. My second pregnancy was actually really hard and it wasn't because my husband was dating. It was because I didn't do a good job of setting boundaries outside of my marriage. As someone who's been non-monogamous for such a long period of time, you'd think I would be really good at setting boundaries in all aspects of my life, but it turns out I am not. Seems like maybe you weren't doing a good job setting boundaries within your marriage as well, like asking your husband to be home and helping you. Also, people went down the rabbit hole with this woman and apparently she never actually wanted to be in a polyamorous relationship. She didn't want to have an open marriage, but her husband was like begging for it and basically manipulated her and bullied her into doing it. And she just went for it. And now they've been doing it for 13 years. Like it's asinine. And she does not look happy in literally any of her videos. I, of course, went to this person's Instagram. And for anyone interested, this is Danielle at Openly Committed and found this response to the comment, I think if she said no, he would leave her. Unfortunately, Danielle is not as strong and confident in real life. Hey, I'm Danielle. I've been in an open relationship for 14 years at this point, when my husband brought up the idea of non-monogamy, if I would have said no, would he have left me? Who knows? We'll never know. That was 14 years ago. But here's the thing. My husband brought up the idea of a non-monogamous relationship, but we spent two years figuring out what we wanted from our relationship because he didn't give me an ultimatum. My husband didn't say like, hey, we have to be open. He said, hey, we should explore this thing. And the reason that he wanted to explore open relationships is because he had seen affairs just decimate families and he didn't want that to happen to us. And in my case, when we met, I was 25. I didn't want to give up dating and also I'm bisexual. And I felt like this was a way for me to still continue to explore and express that side of me. Those were the two things that we wanted to solve together. 
and being in an open relationship was a solution, but it wasn't the only solution. Regardless of relationship style, there are so many ways that people in a relationship can solve their challenges together. It's so beautiful. And I am communicating and sharing my relationship, somewhat personal details about my relationship on social media. So I am either strong and confident or I am absolutely insane. And if non-monogamy is something that you want to explore, then feel free to follow, connect with me across my different social channels. I also have book recommendations and a couple other links on my website. You can find all the links in the place where the links are. I highly doubt Brett watched more of Danielle's content beyond the TikTok she showed us, but regardless, well, they don't look happy or well, they don't seem happy isn't an argument. It's your opinion. And honestly, it's gross to hope someone is unhappy to prove you right. Anyway, back to Twitter. Somebody commented and said, polyamory only continues if you are able to suppress all of your natural instincts, either through drugs or emotional abuse. Somebody else said, so she works long hours and takes care of their son and has no time to date while he's out there banging away. Oh, sis, no. Somebody else said, because it doesn't work and it kills them inside to admit it. In my opinion, that is spot on. This is going to be a whole thing. So the first TikTok she showed was a repost from Pagliacci the Hated, who added her own comment Commentary that Danielle was on the verge of tears. And this research about how Danielle didn't even want polyamory was also from Pagliacci, who had this to say about the following video. Note that this woman admitted she didn't even want a polyamorous relationship and her husband basically hounded her and gaslit over the course of many weeks, months to get her to do it. 12 years ago, my now husband asked me to be in an open relationship and I still remember how it feels. Rich and I had only been dating a few months and we took our first vacation together. I went to high school in Vienna and I wanted to bring him to Austria and maybe show off my German a little bit. It was the end of winter, so I took him to Innsbruck. I tried to teach him how to ski, but mostly we spent the weekend relaxing, hiking, and eating good food. We were walking along the river when he asked me if I would consider being in an open relationship. He said all the right things. He told me it was my choice and that we could take it as slow as I wanted and that it wasn't an ultimatum. And I still remember that moment. I felt so hurt that he obviously didn't feel about me the way that I felt about him because it is so deeply ingrained in me that when I met my person, that that would be it. I'm walking through Palazzo Vecchio and when I see the map of Innsbruck, it is still the moment I think about. So if you're asking someone to consider being in an open relationship, be patient. It's not just one conversation, it's many, but that person might remember that first conversation for the rest of your relationship. How on earth did this person get her husband basically hounded and gaslit her into polyamory from that video? I also remember when my boyfriend at the time suggested polyamory to me. I was hurt because I thought he was saying I wasn't enough. As Danielle said, our society has it ingrained in us that monogamy is the only real way to show commitment. And anything else means that person doesn't really love you, doesn't really want to be with you. And it takes work to unlearn that. This Pagliacci is a writer for Redux, an anti, well, an anti-trans woman website, and their pinned post says, my job is just hate, so I suppose I should expect nothing less than dishonesty from this person, but Brett really needs to vet her sources better. Assuming she cares about accuracy and given what we're about to see, I'm thinking she doesn't. So before we continue, I just want to say that I've watched some more of Danielle's content and I wanted to share this video. I'm not a feminist. Oh, I am. I'm a feminist and I wear dresses and skirts and pants or whatever makes me feel the most beautiful and confident. I'm not a feminist. I can actually cook. I'm a feminist. I can cook, but I'm not obligated to. I cook when I'm in the mood. You know who else can cook? My husband. But if neither of us have the energy or capacity one night, then we're serving frozen pizza. I'm not a feminist. I don't hate children. I'm a feminist and a mom and much more. I love my two children and I'm grateful to not be defined by them. I'm not a feminist. Thank you. I'm a feminist. Let's all just hold the door open for whoever comes in next. I'm a feminist. And then people ask me if I'm actually a woman. I'm a feminist and I am so grateful for the women and men who have paved the way and continue to work for modern feminism. Where all people have equal rights and the opportunity to create lives and relationships that are unique to them. And I'm now following Danielle on Instagram. But anyway, back to Brett, who is about to be shockingly dishonest with her 
polyamory studies. Also, like I said, the facts back me up. This is a study from 2012 when it was still acceptable to question these open relationships. This is the impact of polygamy on women's mental health, a systemic review. And look what they found. Their studies generally suggest a more significant prevalence of mental health issues in polygamous women compared to monogamous women. Individual studies report a higher prevalence of somatization, depression, anxiety, hostility, psychoticism, and psychiatric disorder in polygamous wives, as well as reduced life and marital satisfaction, problematic family functioning, and low self-esteem. Wow, guys, color me shocked. It is so crazy that eliminating security and commitment and the nervous system regulating benefits of having a monogamous partner that loves you would lead to mental health concerns. Wow, could have never, ever assumed that. Can't believe that is what they discovered. Here's another. Polygamy and poor mental health among Arab and Bedouin women. Do socioeconomic position and social support matter? And then TLDR, polygamy is associated with a higher risk for poor mental health of women regardless of their SEP and education and social support seems to have some protective effect. And I could keep going. I mean, here are two more. Psychological symptoms and sexual satisfaction in polygamic and monogamic wives. Monogamic wives had higher satisfaction from their sexual lives and had less frequent psychiatric symptoms than polygamic wives. Prevalence of mental health problems in women in polygamous versus monogamous marriages, a systemic review and meta-analysis. The meta-analysis indicates that women in polygamous marriages had worsened mental health as compared with women in monogamous marriages. You aren't hearing things. Brett is using studies of Middle Eastern women in polygamous marriages as proof that polyamorous relationships are bad for mental health. Setting aside that polygamy and polyamory aren't the same thing, how much choice does Brett think those women had over their marriages? How much choice does Brett think those women had and their husbands? How much choice does Brett think those women had in their everyday lives? And let's take a moment to appreciate how Brett goes hard for tradition, but in some parts of the world, polygamy is tradition. Maybe I expect too much, but this is shockingly dishonest. And of course, we're not done. And it's so funny, guys, because it's not just these random reports and studies that have been done around the world for the last, you know, 15 years or so. Even on websites dedicated to poly relationships, they acknowledge these facts. This is from findpoly.com, and they wrote that other research has revealed that polyamorous people are more likely to face relationship-related pressures and are more likely to suffer from mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. One study, for example, discovered that persons in polyamorous relationships experienced higher levels of relationship-related stress than those in monogamous partnerships, and they did not even try to refute it. There was no paragraph afterwards saying, but this is untrue because of X, Y, and Z research. They just left it. They were like, yep, those are the facts. Can't do anything about it. I do find it funny that Brett read that line, but not the paragraph right above it. Ethical non-monogamy and mental health have complicated and diverse relationships. According to several studies, people in polyamorous relationships may have better mental health results than those in monogamous relationships. Individuals in consensually non-monogamous relationships, for example, reported higher levels of contentment and lower levels of jealousy than those in monogamous partnerships, according to one study. Another study discovered that people in polygamous relationships reported higher levels of intimacy and communication than people in monogamous partnerships. I've never heard of this website before, and they don't link to or even cite their sources, so I would take it with a large grain of salt. But it's so interesting that Brett will grasp at anything that says polyamory bad, even when, well. And across the internet, there are people asking for help, saying, you know, I want to be poly, I want to support this open relationship that I'm in, but my anxiety is off the charts and I'm so depressed. I mean, here's one Reddit post. I used to feel okay with polyamory, but mental health has made it so much more difficult. This is from a poly advice thread. I have a lot of relationship anxiety and nothing I try is soothing it. Being in a polyamorous relationship is horrible for my mental health. And this girl is like dealing with crippling anxiety over her boyfriend seeing other people, which she agreed to, and now she regrets it and can't get out of it. This is from seven years ago. I feel like being poly is making me depressed. Again, I wonder why. It is not rocket science, people. This is common sense. This is why traditional things have stood the test of time and why they work. Why, yes, she did use Reddit to back up her claims. Because, as we all know, people in monogamous relationships never feel anxious or depressed or post online asking for relationship advice. Somebody on X commented and said, Many traditional values like monogamy are lessons learned by previous generations. People should probably think a bit more before deciding that they don't apply. Spot on. And tradition does not have to mean boring or confining or oppressive, as many have said. In fact, today, I would argue that tradition is actually incredibly freeing. It is freeing from these systems and ideas that control us and make us dumber and truly are making us more unhappy than ever before. So it is time, my friends, to be traditionally untraditional. Reminder that Project 2025 includes the line about how we have the freedom to live as we ought, not as we want. And this is all bollocks. Like with Ariel Scarcella, if Brett was truly concerned about the mental health of people in polyamorous relationships, 
she would have made this video very differently. But that's not what it's about. She doesn't care if people are happy and healthy or not. She just doesn't want people to be in polyamorous relationships. And so she uses everything she can, even confusing polygamy in the Middle East for polyamory, to try and dissuade people from it. But let's be honest, Brett's audience isn't considering polyamory. This is just to let them know that they are within their rights to shame anyone who appears different, with the handy excuse that really it's for their own good. It hasn't escaped my notice that the instant you step outside the box, the instant society perceives you as not normal, that becomes all you are and the source of all your problems. And so the people who bully you or shame you or try to ostracize you are actually doing you a favor by trying to convince or shove you back into the box. Basically, they just want an excuse to bully people who are doing things they deem gross or immoral. And Brett is giving them permission. But sure, she's all about mental health. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.